Hi everybody and welcome back to The Bindery. Today I'd like to show you how I make my upcycled pocket notebooks. These are made from standard 8.5 by 11 size paper and they use a simple staple binding and they're upcycled because for this group I used maps from an old atlas to make the covers. But you could just as easily use any variety of papers of your choice commercially made papers, or even handmade marbled paper. The notebooks are made by laminating the cover paper onto a cardstock so that you get a clean surface on the inside and it adds a little bit of strength and durability to the cover. So in the video you see how I laminate the cover papers to the cardstock without getting any bending. And then I'll go through the process of trimming and binding the books. The process starts by applying a spray adhesive to the cover stock. I pre-print my logo on what will become the inside of the back cover and I use a spray-on adhesive because it won't impart any moisture into the paper. This eliminates any curling or warping in the finished covers and it'll work on just about any type of paper. I've pre-cut all of my map covers to size and I work quickly to adhere them to the cardstock before the adhesive dries. I use a bone folder to make sure the two sheets are well attached. Then I place the covers under some boards with a weight on top while I make the rest. Once I've laminated all the covers, I give them a good squeeze in my press for an hour or so just to let the glue cure. Once those are dry and well bonded, we move over to my large paper cutter to trim the covers to size. I got this great old cutter second hand and it's been a great addition to the shop. Now since each sheet will make two individual covers, I'll need to cut them in half. I adjust the cutter's back fence to half of the height of the sheets, clamp them down, and then I chop them down the middle. This cut is almost always a bit off center, so I put both stacks back in, nudge the fence forward a little bit, and then I trim off a tiny bit more. This ensures that all the covers will be the same height. For the pages of these notebooks, I'm going to use lined paper. Bulk lined paper that's suitable for binding can be almost impossible to find. Most of what I see is either three hole punched or it has vertical margin lines that will be in all the wrong places once you fold the pages. It's possible to print your own lined paper, but for these notebooks I was able to find some lined stationary pads that I cut down to size. Here I'm counting out 12 sheets per notebook, which when folded will make for a total of 48 pages. To attach the covers I'm using a long reach stapler. I've mounted this one to a board and marked some reference lines so that the staples will be in the right places. Two staples is all it takes to bind the pages and cover together. I take the extra step of flattening the staples with a hammer, but that's purely for aesthetic reasons. The notebooks will function just fine with regular staples. Next I need to fold the notebooks. I do this after assembly for a couple of reasons. It's much easier to do the stapling while the notebooks are flat than it is to try to align the staples along a creased edge. 
folding the covers first can create a very hard crease that sometimes cracks the paper on the outside of the spine, whereas folding the cover around the pages makes for a gentle curve. I firm down the fold with my bone folder on each one and try to keep all these paper springs in one place under some weights. Once all of the books are folded, I stack them up and squeeze them down as hard as I can in the press for the night. The next day I take the notebooks out of the press and you can see that it's really set the paper fibers and eliminated that springiness. Now even though I've been careful in assembling these to this point, the pages and covers are never quite perfect and the four edges will always look a little bit ragged. Trimming the books not only gives them a nice finished appearance, but it makes it easier to flip through the pages as well, so this is an important step. If you're only making one or two of these notebooks, you can carefully do this with a blade and a straight edge, but with this many, it's impractical to do one at a time. The paper cutter lets me work in batches and gives clean and consistent results. I trim one end of all the books first, then advance the fence and trim them all to their finished height. Finally, I get to the most satisfying step, which is trimming the four edges. I line the books up carefully and slice off only as much as I have to to get a nice clean edge. The result is a stack of notebooks that are neatly trimmed and all the same size. Now I could call these books finished, but as one final touch I like to round off the outer corners. I feel that this gives the notebooks a bit more durability as the corners won't get so dog-eared and frayed while they ride around in a pocket or a purse. I use a heavy duty corner cutter tool for this, which allows me to trim several books at once with the blade going through all the covers and papers in one go. A handheld cutter would work as well, though you'd likely have to work one book at a time and perhaps just a few pages at a time. And now, all trimmed with rounded corners, this notebook is finished. So that's how I mass produce my pocket notebooks. If you're still with me at this point, then thank you for watching. I hope you found the video to be interesting and useful. If you have, then do check out some of my other videos on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to see what sort of bookish projects I take on next. I'll see you in the next video.